I'm starting out today's video with a trigger warning. Although this is a what I eat a day on low carb keto, it is also a day in my life as a type one diabetic. So uh, we're getting ready to talk about some foods that could trigger some people. I'm one of those people myself that's easily triggered. I'm a food addict, so just know there's gonna be a brief section right here where I'm gonna be talking about sugar and the fact that I consumed it. So I just wanted to put that out there. If you wanna skip ahead just a little bit, I completely understand. There's so much to catch up on. I'm gonna save all of that for the chat later. Once I'm feeling more like myself and can sit down, have a snack or a drink with you guys. I want to show you what I woke up to this morning at 5.44 a.m. My blood sugar so low that it won't even register when I swipe my arm. I think for it to just say low and not register a number, it has to be um, below 40, which is extremely low. Here's why I gave the trigger warning. When my blood sugar goes that low, which it has been for about the past week, I've been struggling with some really scary numbers. Um, I have to consume sugar because although fat and protein will raise my blood sugar, it takes it a while, like an hour. And when my blood sugar is this low, I need something that's going to be immediate and i know that um some of you are going to suggest glucose tabs glucose tabs are just sugar they're just exactly what they say glucose tabs and they're extremely expensive and not very pleasant to eat either because they taste like chalk this is what's in my nightstand right now so i can grab several of these and it will raise my blood sugar up really quickly and I get these right now because they're super cheap. This little bag is 79 cents at my local warehouse grocery store that I usually show during my grocery hauls, United Grocery Outlet. I ate four of those and 20 minutes later, I was up to a whopping 56. So I feel like I'm running in slow motion today, I guess, where I was in that red section for so long this morning. It looks like it started around 3.30 a.m. and I didn't wake up till 5.44. So that's the situation this morning. Uh, before I got in the car to take Briley to school, of course, I swapped my arm to make sure I was at a good number to drive, and I was at 187. I have got to the point now, which I didn't in the beginning of my type 1 diabetes journey, but I've got to the point now where I go into panic mode. And I've heard diabetics talk about going into panic mode when they hit those lows, and over consuming sugar. And I thought, that'll never be me. Well, I literally ate those words. It's definitely me. Because when I'm that low and I'm shaky and I can't think and I'm nauseous and I'm worried, of course I over consume. My blood sugar shoots up really quickly, which of course makes me feel like crap again and then normally I have to struggle with taking insulin to get it back into a normal range. Today not so much uh, so swapped it once I got home from dropping Briley off at school. I was at 128 and it said going down. Right now it is 8:40 a.m. so I'm at 149. You know what? I would rather be at 149 than a number that doesn't register. So I'll keep that. Now, let's address literally the elephant in the room. Can you guys see the disaster that's behind me? My kitchen looks like a hoarder lives here. 
So this is all of Chris's eBay stuff, his eBay store that he started. Spoiler alert that we're gonna talk about more in the chat. Chris is gone. He is back to work and this is something that I have to take care of now. My plan for this week is to get all of this listed. Now, I'm not gonna blame all of this mess on Chris because it's not. Some of it's his for the eBay store, but when he started his eBay store, I started up my Poshmark closet again and also Depop because you know I love me some vintage funky clothing and apparently that's what Depop is more about. Weird kind of vintage, different, colorful kind of stuff. I'm loving it on Depop. I'll have all three of those linked down below if you just want to go look and see what I'm talking about. I managed to get all of this washed and cleaned and ready to take pictures of and list. This morning I am being fueled by an Alani new and it's a cherry slush. I went out to the outside refrigerator and went into our little storage building shed that's right beside of the fridge where we keep all of our extra drinks and I found a six pack little case of the cherry slush. Didn't even know I had it. So of course I'm having one of those, which does make me quite happy. So I will be consuming that caffeine. Since my blood sugar is already a little wonky, I will probably skip breakfast, which I normally do most days anyways, unless I see it starting to fall. If it starts to fall, then I'll go ahead and eat. That way I don't have to consume any sugar. But today, we're talking lunch, snacks, drinks, break, no, no breakfast, um, dinner, desserts, anything I consume, eat, I'll talk about, and huge chat coming up, wedding talk, Chris leaving, I have an entire list. Here goes Quincy and Mira. Thankfully. It's supposed to be a gorgeous, sunny, and warm fall day today, so we'll be having that chat outside, and I'll get to enjoy some of this weather. It has been exceptionally cold, and you know I hate the cold, but I'm going to go get today started, and I'll see you in a minute. It's 10 o'clock, so it's time for insulin. This is my long-lasting insulin. This is the insulin I have to take daily to control my blood sugar levels. This is not the one that I take when I eat. I'm gonna take 10 units of this and get back to work. I have not managed to do much because I was researching this puzzle that I'm getting ready to put on eBay. ADHD, I guess. For those of you that wanna know that scene, that was in Vermont in the 70s. Okay, back to work. Did I show you all the little bag that Kerrigan had made me to put all of my insulin and supplies in like my alcohol pads. Lazy Pancreas Club. I've been sitting right here on my couch outside enjoying this gorgeous weather. It's 11.30 so I checked my blood sugar. I'm at 98 and steadily going down. I don't want it to get too low. So I'm gonna go peek in the fridge and see what I can throw together. I guess I'll be eating lunch super early today. I'm gonna open up one of the salad kits. I like to keep these on hand just in case we need a quick lunch or I need to throw something together. This one is the Everything Chopped Salad Kit by Taylor Farms. It has a little packet of the Everything But The Bagel seasoning. I'm gonna throw that in there and I'm gonna add some extra. I will be leaving out the little crispy bagel chips. Then I'll just toss all of that up. I did use the dressing that came with it. I threw together some tartar sauce, mayo, a little bit of sugar-free pickled relish, some Old Bay, a little bit of sriracha, and then just mix all that together. I had some leftover salmon that I had made over the weekend in the air fryer, so all I did was warm that up, plated some salad, and I got a quick lunch. You, my glasses are... Filthy. 
Let me clean those real quick. I don't think that helped much. I feel like I have already chatted you guys to death today, but it's about 2.30 before I head to town to pick up Briley from school. I'm going to have a snack because after I pick her up, I do have to run some errands and I have to run by the post office. Quincy says hi. The poor fella is literally suffering with allergies right now. For today's snack and chat, I'm having a bottle of water, I'm trying to get in at least one a day. Still struggle with this, people. I still struggle. And I'm also having one of the peanut butter perfect keto mellow munch bars. These are good when you dip them in chocolate. I've shown that before. I think it was a short or a TikTok or something, but they're delicious anyways. Think Rice crispy Treat. They're available in different flavors. I think I got an email this morning saying that Perfect Keto was having their Halloween sale. Let me check. Why yes, yes I did. Okay, so today through Monday the 31st, 31% off of your orders of $75 or more, plus free shipping and a free treat. And I think that says it's going to be a super fat macadamia coconut nut butter. It doesn't say that you need a promo code, but you do need to use the link that's down in that description box. And when you click on it, it'll take you on over there. You place your order 75 plus and then you'll be able to save that big chunk. Also, remember, down there in the description box, poke around and look at all of the discount codes that I have down there for you guys. So if you do order anything online, like Keto Bars, Chalk Zero, I think they've got a sale going on right now too, all that good stuff, save. Use the discount codes that are down there. Chris managed to take the last two boxes of Perfect Keto Bars with him, and he also took the last chocolate collagen, so I'll have to put my order in as soon as possible. Okay, hold on one second so that I can open this and not make a ton of noise. What to talk about? Mm, oh yeah, Chris left. He left this past weekend, Sunday morning, bright and early. He had got a call earlier in the week that there was a job opening up in central New York. That was pretty much the plan all along, that he would stay home until after the wedding and then he would head back to work for a few months because that's how we build up our health insurance. He sort of banks hours and goodness knows we need our health insurance to pay for insulin and diabetes supplies and all of that stuff. Speaking of the wedding, we had Kerrigan's wedding. She got married on October 16th. Unfortunately, I do not have a ton of photos at this moment. It was an unplugged ceremony, so we didn't have any cameras out, any phones. I had paid a photographer an obscene amount of money to take photos. So that was one reason why she wanted to do an unplugged ceremony so that everybody could just focus and be present. And that's exactly what I did. I actually laid my phone down and I don't think I touched it the entire evening. Now, of course, after the ceremony, everybody had out their phones and they were taking pictures and stuff like that, but I still didn't. I wanted to enjoy the moment. I wanted to remember everything, not just be cheesing it up and like playing with the photos and, you know, posting them and stuff like that. We did get a preview of some of the photos that she's edited, so I'm going to be flipping through those as I talk. They are going to turn out absolutely amazing and I'm so excited to see all of them. She got married around five o'clock on that Sunday. Thankfully it was not cold. It was probably about 69 degrees on that day. It rained a large majority of the day until her ceremony and it stopped long enough to have the ceremony outside and then as soon as the ceremony was over it started raining again. The venue was gorgeous. Kerrigan looked amazing. We had a wonderful time 
and as soon as I get all of the photos back, of course, I'm going to be sharing some more of those, but I'm glad I was able to give you this little sneak peek of what we have got back so far. I know that I have been MIA lately. Um... There's been a lot going on, obviously, with Chris leaving and packing up and the wedding, and it's just been hectic. There are some things I do want to talk about, but I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't really want to approach it right now. I'm struggling a little bit emotionally, obviously. I mean, Kerrigan's moved out. My oldest son's moved out. Chris is gone. It's just me here. Briley's at school and I mean she's a teenager she rarely comes out of her room it's just a huge adjustment period and I'm having to stay extremely busy because it helps when I'm busy I'm not constantly thinking about stuff you know empty nest syndrome and all that jazz but mainly I don't know how to approach it with you guys anymore. I don't feel like I'm on the same journey as I was when I started. I feel like it's evolved into me trying to survive and trying to live and not let diabetes get the best of me. I just worry that we're not on the same journey anymore. So I've not been recording as much. I just, I don't know how to approach this anymore. I don't know what to do with my channel anymore. I don't, I don't know what to do. But this journey that I'm on now is different. It's a struggle and I don't want to just come out here and whine and cry and boohoo every single time that I film. And I don't want to lay all that on you because who wants to watch all that and just be sad and depressed and nobody, nobody. I don't want to see that. So instead of filming, I've just been throwing myself into Poshmark, Depop, and eBay and focusing on those things. I don't know where my channel stands at this point. I still love you guys. I think about all of you often. I feel like I'm letting you down by not filming, by not putting out the same amount of content. Let me know your thoughts. If you have any ideas, if you still want to see what's going on, let me know. I, I'm, I'm struggling. Okay. Okay. I'm getting anxious. So I'm starting to, you know, eh, I'm like getting ready to start biting my nails. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the chat short, which it's probably not short, but short for me. And I'm going to finish my snack and go pick up Briley. And of course, stop by the post office and mail a ton of packages. Let's talk about dinner tonight. Do you remember me picking this up in my last grocery haul? This is a little seasoning packet. It's the Hatch Green Chili Bowl. So you're supposed to make rice bowls with it. I used this on just some thin chicken breasts. I opened a can of green beans. I drained off the water, added butter, and let those cook on the stove until they were extremely tender. I probably cooked them too long, but that's the way I like them. I had some fresh mushrooms in the fridge, went ahead and sliced those up, and then I added some of the Trader Joe's seasoning to it, the 21 Seasoning Salute. Love that stuff. It's great on burgers, mushrooms. Cook those until tender. And to drink, I'm having a Coke Zero Sugar. Dessert tonight. Uh, yeah, I went a little overboard. I had three pieces of sugar-free keto-friendly fudge. I like to make this up and have it on hand for when I want something sweet. You can make two-ingredient fudge, three-ingredient fudge. I have tons of fudge recipes. Definitely helps with those sweet cravings. Well, the plan was to come back out and chat with you guys a little bit more this evening. Did not get a chance. Preston came up and we hung out and had some fun 
family time. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I hope you have had a wonderful October so far. Can you believe it's almost over? Don't forget before you leave, if you haven't already to subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this a like or thumbs up, whichever one you call it. My other social media accounts will be in that description box along with all of the discount codes for your favorite keto items. I'll see you guys soon. I promise. Thank you for being an awesome group of people. I appreciate you more than you know. I'll see you next time. Bye.